Tom, Douglas, welcome. Tom, if I could start with you, just tell me, if you would, the work that you're doing at UBS, because it's pretty unique. Yeah, thank you, and great to, to be here today. So UBS is the world's largest wealth manager. We have about $5 trillion worth of capital under management, about a million high net worth individuals. And 95% of our clients around the world say that they want to use their wealth to try and solve some of the pressing social, and obviously we're here at COP, so environmental problems the world's facing. And, and my team is a response to that, really. And this is not a new thing. This is something that's been happening for the last two decades. We have about 150 people dedicated to supporting our clients to maximize their impact, to really think about how they can do that in a, in a measurable way that really does drive change. So clearly the appetite's there. Uh, Doug, last time we spoke on BCG's podcast, you spoke about how banks can be more than just intermediaries. They can actually be agents of change. Explain that to us a bit more, if you would. Yeah, so I think banks have probably more than any other industry an opportunity to create positive social impact. I mean, Tom was talking about wealth management, but in addition to that, in a retail bank, the opportunity for financial inclusion. In the corporate bank, the opportunity to integrate social considerations into bonds and into loans. We think of, just like there's a scope one, two, and three for climate, we think of a scope one, two, or three for social. Scope one, what you can do with your employees. Scope two, what you can do with your direct clients. And scope three, what you can do with the customers of your clients. And you have opportunities across all three areas. One of the issues in this space, I guess, is, is measurement, especially social. Um, yours is a very data-led approach, isn't it? Yeah, look, at the end of the day, you're not going to achieve net zero or my SDG pin here, meet the sustainable development goals, unless you prove that you are, which requires impact transparency. And what do we mean by that? We mean when you make a, a donation or an investment to drive impact in an in a attributed way, can you prove it? Is it causal? Uh, the best example is probably we're all back here at COP because vaccines went through a clinical trial. Like nobody would take those things if we didn't believe in that efficacy and proof. We, we then need to measure who is being impacted. And I think particularly in relation to the social impacts, we just had a, a fantastic roundtable talking about just transition. What are the social impacts of climate change going to be for communities of disadvantage? And if we're not driving capital into those communities at scale, then, then we're not going to see the, the kinds of sustainable change towards both the sustainable development goals and, and net zero that we all want to see. So ultimately, that's about really clear impact measurement. And one of the things that me and my team are working on is, is, is using our global footprint and the fact that we are one of the largest global banks. We've, you know, the, the, the wealth management industry is at $103 trillion worth of capital, 81% of which says it wants to have impact alongside. That, that's not happening today. And one of the reasons that's not happening is because people don't fully trust the data. But if we could have a simple, almost a bond rating for impact that was like, this is definitely causal, this is definitely targeting inequality, this is definitely at scale, or here's the work that needs to be done. That's, we think, one of the killer apps that will really start to move capital at scale. Because as I said earlier, we know investors care. Yeah. You know investors cared. Look, Doug, you've been doing a lot of research into the space. You've surveyed hundreds of leaders. Um, what have you found? So I think a few key outcomes of this survey that we did. I think one is we asked about the relative importance of the focus of a bank on climate versus social. And I think historically they've thought of social being very important. I think more re recently there's been more emphasis on climate, but looking forward, again, the bankers are saying that we need to redouble focus on social. I think the second point is that what is driving the focus on social is a little bit different than it is on climate. We surveyed them and they said the number one factor driving their climate programs is about regulation, and particularly in Europe. The number one factor in the social side of things is the other stakeholder. So it's about the employees and it's about the clients, right? And I think the third thing is that more and more bankers are saying, we are gonna be addressing social issues not as part of a traditional CSR DEI program, but integrating it into the core of our business and integrating it into the core of our business model. Does that resonate? Well, look, at the end of the day, 
trying to solve these huge social issues with a, a few donations off the side as part of your CSR program isn't going to cut it, right? We have to integrate them into the way the entire economy works. And, and, and ultimately, that's what, what we've been talking about is the need to transition to an impact economy, which actually includes net zero, that properly prices not just the, the negative externalities of the planet in, in investment decisions, which is what COP's all about, but also the, the social and economic contribution of people. And, and I believe that there will be no net zero without it being community-led. You have to take communities with you. And we see that both in terms of the, in the political, potential political backlash against some of these things. If communities elect governments and they're not happy with what's happening and, and understanding the upsides and the opportunities for them, then you'll get backlash there. But also just at a practical level, you know, avoided deforestation is one of the most important parts to net, net zero. It's communities trying to feed themselves that are deforesting more mangroves and, 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 and rainforests than, than anything else. And unless we find ways for them to prosper in those landscapes, then, then we are not going to achieve the goals we want to achieve. So, so social and community is inextric inextricably linked with the pathway to net zero. Tom, Douglas, thank you so much. Thanks, Georgie.